bus travels fast. This UPS box caught me by surprise today as not very long ago, just a day ago, I received a surprise message from Daniel Fox of Zweihander Grimm and Perilous Studios and Andrews McMeal Publishing to let me know that it, that something wicked was on its way to me. Now, I've torn the label off, but here we go. The box didn't spend much time in transit from there to here, and so not much damage was done. But when I touch the box, it feels swollen, both with promise and with packing material, as you can see by the way it sits here. All right, so I'm going to cut the tape off the corners of the box and then see if we can find the easiest way to get the box open uh, because this really isn't a classical unboxing video. This is a review copy uh, sent to me directly and so other international consumers likely won't be getting them this way. But I do show it just to demonstrate the care taken by the person ultimately responsible for getting our game materials to us, whether we are Kickstarter backers or whether we're purchasing them through some other route. Now, the best and most authoritative unboxing video I think that you can watch about Mangosh is the one done by Daniel Fox himself. It was released in a variety of different locations. The one I saw was on Twitter. You can find it at Zweihander RPG. It was released on July 9th. And the enthusiasm is contagious. It's fun to see the excitement both in the, you know, the receiving of the game from production, but just in talking about it. So in that video, Daniel goes through every aspect of design from the, the art and artists, uh, typesetting, everything. So I think that's, that's well worth a watch so that you know what you're getting into. But here we go with my efforts. Now, I commented in the last video where we received the revised core book about how awesome I think these air pillows are and my estimation of them has not decreased. I think they're fantastic. But this time, a very specific jacket was constructed for the air pillows. And, uh, and that was also very cool. I almost wanted to keep it in case I had to send something somewhere at some point. But inside the air pillows, I've been told to expect this main gauche, a supplement first fi hander and some other things i have no idea what the other things might be so you know this is this is pretty cool so let's see we've got bubble wrap inside the air pillows so even if some kind of you know uh watery mishap were to occur i i feel a, a good amount of confidence this is a just a quick shot inside the the air pillow jacket but uh, anyway, let's get the bubble wrap off and uh, start talking about the book itself. So this is an, an early preview. We backers will be getting our copies uh, sometime after the end of July. I'm expecting uh, mine to show up sometime in August. And just because of the, the vast distances involved but uh, we received a notice today, July 13th, that shipping is on schedule to take place during July. So the closer you are to the points of distribution, the quicker you'll get it. And I'm about as far as you can get from those. <laughs> so this is the first surprise. This is the character folio. Uh, you may already have this in PDF. This is the print version with its humorous certificate of death. And inside the character folio are a variety of very handy character sheets, as you might expect. So, it has this awesome page right up front, the wait, where is that page, giving you a quick breakdown or index of where important things are in Zweihander core rulebook. There's all kinds of stuff in here. 
So let's take a, a flip through. We've got some blank pages at the back. We've got another copy of the death certificate. We've got more blank pages. We've got section for your house rules. We have notes about uh, vehicle combat and your spell lists and everything. You know, you might be a minimalist character sheet kind of person, or you might be a you know the more pages the better kind of character sheet uh, person. And this has you covered. You could you know have your one-page character sheet on one side and rules that you find useful printed on or photocopied onto the back, however you might like to do it. The Game Master's Notebook is similar in its utility. It's focused directly at the Game Master, obviously, and provides all kinds of sheets or ways of thinking about tracking different things during the game, whether it's just notes or travel distances or detailed notes about the state of combat, either to keep us flowing smoothly through this session or to remind us of where we were if we stop in the middle of one. There's not just physical combat, but also social combat and who's beholden to whom and so on and so forth. Plus, again, notes about your particular house rules or other additions or subtractions you may have made that you want to remember easily. So a lot of sense of this is really your game this is an engine this is something to fiddle with and fine-tune and we're going to see more games in the future coming out using this particular iteration of the d100 concept so that's all fun and welcoming so i've just brushed away some white powder from the original packing material so we can have an unobstructed view of the brilliant colors and high level of detail in this very violent and vibrant cover demonstrating the conflict between chaos and its opposite. But let's finally begin to take a look at Mangosh, an optional supplement for Zweihander. So what do we mean by optional? Well, Zweihander is huge and it has more than enough to keep you going. But what if you have something specific on your mind, like I don't know, vehicle combat it may not be a big part of every campaign, but it might be a part of some. Well, that's in here, along with a lot of other stuff. It seems that the development of layout for this book is what really sparked and motivated the complete revision of Zweihander as a print product. So these two are very much in sync with each other internally and externally, and we have a note, how nice. The end papers of this one being a nice ashen gray, kind of difficult to write on without one of those uh, like silvery signature markers, which pretty much make everything illegible. So that note is a nice touch. All right, so here we are, a grim and perilous supplement. I take a look, we have the same, it's obviously part of the same line, and what I want to point out here is that this is one page staying open. Right Now this is a thick, glossy page, the sort of thing you might expect to naturally close by itself. Maybe most of the books on the shelf that you have for RPGs, especially print-on-demands, actually do that. So let's take a giant, right? 700 page print on demand book. This is Raiders of Relia, right? And we're not looking at the content of this book. We're just looking at the behavior of the spines. This is several pages in. I will now let go of the paper and blink. So that wasn't one page closing. That was all the pages I had closing. This is one page. Obviously, it's going to close, and it does. So let's, I don't know, let's play a little bit. Let's go in, what is that? 44 pages. All right, wanna take a wager? Of course not, because we know it's gonna close, and it does. All right, so this is not a lay flat book. By It's not designed to lay flat. It's not designed to give us an easy reading experience. This is 200 pages in. And this is still 200 pages in, and now we're at 180, 140, it's getting a little iffy. There we go. So, this book 
doesn't do what it was not designed to do. This book does do what it was designed to do, and what it was designed to do is lay flat to be a table reference. It is designed to do this, and so it does. So other than that, we can see the distinctive and consistent art from Grim and Perilous associated with Zweihander. It definitely feels like a continuation or supporting material. The page is a low gloss and has a very nice finish to it. It's quite easy to read. The font is augmented by a simple and consistent organizational method plus the limited but effective use of color right down to the page numbers. Now in this book, you're going to find a series of small books. We've got the Book of Mortals, the Book of Weapons, the Book of Vehicles, the Book of Alchemy, the Book of Demons, and more. All of them are given Latin names, which I'm not going to attempt to pronounce. We have the Book of Shadows, the Book of Evil, the Book of Mysteries, and an adventure, and a nice appendix which binds everything together. So throughout we have, as we mentioned, consistent art from one source, which is something I appreciate. And the sidebars and the tables are brought out through the use of sepia. There's a, more than a few full page images. And around the outside we have our thematic edging. So there's all kinds of little things in here, such as a method for dice poker, you know, bringing in a game that's fun both for the players, but that represents something that the characters are doing directly. There are new occupations, new gear, new spells, new chaos, and all of it serving as optional ways to expand Zweihander. If you've been playing it a lot, this might be a direction that you want to go to spice things up or you know, return some mystery. If you're planning on doing something different with Zweihander, there may be something in here which sparks inspiration or has already done what it is that you're thinking about doing. And again, we're thinking about the, the vehicle rules when it's an easy one to think about for there. Here's the, the ribbon, which is kind of a browny black color tying into that, that muted, rotted, uh, corrupt feel that this supplement in particular is bringing out. So it says chaos is not a pit, it's a ladder. What kind of decisions are the characters going to make as they struggle to survive in the grim and perilous world implied by Zweihander or demonstrated by whatever it is that you're using Zweihander for? So this is quite a surprising and pleasing package to get the opportunity to preview. The character folio and the Game Master's Notebook here are small and therefore well bound, easy to use, and quite handy in the way that they make Zweihander easier to use. To back that up, let's zoom into the contents of the folio before we wrap this video up. As you can see, the character sheet section has a good balance between organized guided space and white space for you to get the information that you need easily down onto paper. In the PDF version, this is all fillable. And if you are the sort to mix and match your sheets to create your own character sheet experience, then there's all kinds of stuff in here, not just pages of, of blank lines, but also rules references that are very specific to characters and to player actions that you can print out as reference sheets or uh, copy specifically onto a part of your character sheet where it will be useful for you. And then of course, as you master the system, move away from that entirely as it resides in memory rather than on pieces of paper. So not bad. Similarly, we see that Mangosh takes Zweihander in different directions, giving us more of what the game already does or adding things that while not exactly missing, might be quite useful. All with that top quality packaging that the game has been pushing for from its inception, step by step, trying to get to a position where 
The game is as easy to use as possible for as many people as possible, as accessible as possible, and can stand side by side with any mass produced game out there. In a very real sense, what we're seeing from Grim and Perilous Studios is an example, and one which, in many respects, it would be great if other small, independent role playing game producers with vision could follow. One where the resources available, whether that's personal resources or crowdfunded resources, are directed at improving the quality of the book. Paper, art, binding, text, editing, and proofing. Forgoing the idea that stretch goals mean more books, bigger books, just focusing on better books. Because unfortunately, what some of the larger companies or the larger crowdfunded campaigns have been showing us is that they're willing to produce books that even have huge names attached to them at a level of quality which is beneath us. So, anyway, this is my preview of Mangosh, an excellent addition to this already solid line 